Hi, I'm Troy from Studio 33 Guitar. Thanks for watching. Today we're looking at a song by America called Horse With No Name. And it's a great classic song and it only has two chords throughout the entire song. The tricky part about this song is the strumming pattern. So we'll break that down and have a real good look at that. You might notice too that the video looks a little bit different. I moved from the video room into the guitar room just to change things up a little bit. This is where I normally teach private lessons, but I thought it'd be interesting to do a video in here. But please let me know if you like this setting or if you prefer the original one that I usually use in the video room with the black background. If that makes it easier for you to see my hands or if this room that's a little bit more well lit maybe is a little bit easier to see. I'd like to hear your feedback. You can leave that in the comments down below. And as always, if you do like this video, please let us know. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. That way we know to make more videos like this for you. Let's get right to it and zoom in on the neck, have a look at how to play this song. As I mentioned, we only need two chords for this entire song. The first one is going to be a regular E minor chord, which you may already know, but it's played like this. That's going to be with your index finger on the second fret of the A string, and then your middle finger directly below that. And then you're playing all six strings, the rest of the strings are all open. Now some people play E minor like this. And you can do that as well, whichever way that you prefer. I prefer to do it this way, but if you want to play this way, that's fine for this song as well. The other chord that you need to play is actually easier to play than it is to name. There's a lot of debate about this chord actually and what it's called. Some people think that it's uh, some sort of an F sharp minor chord. Other people think that it's more of a D chord, but some weird names like D add six, add nine some really strange names that could be given to this chord because it is quite unusual. And this is actually the only song that I know that uses this chord. I think when the song was written, he wasn't thinking about what the name of the chord was, but he was playing around with the guitar and found these notes that seemed to sound good and he put them in the song. But regardless, it is an easy chord to play. All you have to do is take that E minor chord that we have, and then we're just gonna split our fingers up and we're gonna put our index finger up a string and the middle finger down a string. And that's it. Now again, we're gonna play all six strings. So we can just refer to this as the second chord of the song because there's not really a good name for it. So the entire song literally just goes between those two chords back and forth. We play one bar on each chord. So that means we're playing a count of four for each chord. So that would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then back. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Well, let's look at a couple of different strumming patterns that you can use for this song. We'll start out kind of basic and then build it up, make it a little bit more complex as we go. As I mentioned before, when we count quarter notes, we're counting one, two, three, four. Now we can simply add in a couple of upstrokes and we usually put those in on the eighth notes. So eighth notes are counted as ands. So we have one and two and three and four and. So each one of those is an eighth note. So if we wanna just simply make this strum a little bit more interesting, we can just add in upstrokes on the ands after three and after four. So that would sound like this. One, two, three, and four, and. and then you switch chords. One, two, three, and four, and. A little bit more up to speed. This next strumming idea, we're gonna actually eliminate beat number three from the strum. And that's gonna sound like this. So 
So for that one, we're still playing for that full four count, but we're not gonna be playing anything on beat three. So our hand is still gonna be going up and down, but we're gonna skip over the strings when we would normally play on that beat three. So that would look like this. One, two, and three, and four, and. One, two, and three, and four, and. Again, up to speed. One, two, and three, and four, and. One, two, and three, and four, and. Now this next one will be the trickiest one and it's probably the closest to the original. Gives it a real interesting rhythmic feel. For this strum, we're using our right hand or our strumming hand to give a bit of a percussive sound on beat two. We're coming down with this hand onto the strings, a bit of a chopping motion. And we're doing that while we mute with this hand. So this will take a little bit of practice to get, but let me show you how it's done. You're gonna start with this E minor chord and you're gonna strum a down up. After that up, you're gonna be coming down with this percussive hit. And as you hit, you wanna take your other two fingers for this E minor chord and just lay them flat against these strings. So you get more of a percussive sound. So you're using this hand to mute the strings and you're also using your strumming hand because when you come down, you're gonna be putting the entire hand across the strings. So between those two hands, you should be able to get everything muted. So that's gonna happen on beat two. So your upstroke is on the and after one. So that's gonna sound like this. One and two. One and two. One and two. And that's gonna be followed by two more upstrokes. So together that'll sound like this. And you can do that exact same way for both chords. Now one final step is we want to add in one last down up in between those chords. So we have our down up, hit, up, up, and then one final down up. So together that would be like this. Once you get that up to speed, it would sound more like this. Well, that's it for this lesson. I hope that you like that and you found this useful. Again, if you did, please let us know by hitting the like button, leaving a comment down below and subscribing to the channel. And also I'd love to hear your feedback about the new room. If this is where you'd like to see the videos take place from now on, or if you prefer, if it went back to the video room and uh, more with the black background, let me know which is a little bit easier to see and follow along. But well, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.